Well, the Hells Angels were a very notorious motor motorcycle gang, and they would do some heinous acts. However, they were our neighbors in San Francisco, and we would have long kirtan singing of the Hare Krishna mantra, because back then he just spoon-fed us the wisdom, not too many, not too long talks or lectures. So one night, we hear on the wall. And so my guru calls me and says, Guru Das, what's that? And I'm thinking, why me? Why did he call me? But I knew it was the Hells Angels. And they were living, uh, it was called God's Eye, ice cream parlor, mm -hmm. God's Eye. It's a Native American, this was the 60s. And so the diggers were an Irish group that was philanthropical. So we fed people and they did. But now there was this banging on the wall. So I go and I knock on the door and there's this huge Hell's Angels with hardly any teeth. And he's got a swastika etched into his cheek and I thought that's not a good sign. And then I had my bead bag and he pulls out a stiletto knife and, but I was nice and I said, well, our Swamiji's gonna speak now. And we were wondering what that banging on the wall was. He said, well, I was banging on the wall, man, because of your singing. Because when you sing, that's what we do. And this is, <laughs> I was saying this the other night, there's a, a saying in America, mostly jazz musicians first, knock yourself out. <laughs> so I didn't say knock yourself out, but I thought it because he was banging against the wall. So then he said, well, we really like your Swami and I won't bang against the wall while your Swami speaks. So we had an interaction with this notorious, heinous motorcycle gang. Then, when we had our first mantra rock dance in San Francisco, they, they already were destroying dances and beating people up and everything like that, so this was my idea. I thought if we make them our security, this will cancel out the threat of the Hells Angels, which it did. So we had an interaction with the Hells Angels and so we were bringing things to the Beatles. First it was on Baker Street, but then they moved to Savile Row. And so we were bringing things. Uh, Jamuna did a calligraphy cover for International Times of the Hare Krishna Mantra. I did two segments of the Prahlad story, a great child devotee of Krishna. I, I had uh, paintings and text, I did two of those. We found an apple that walked, we put the Maha Mantra on it. Mm -hmm. However, the Beatles at the time were asking people to give some ideas. They were inundated with so many ideas, self-made messiahs. And so Peter Asher, the brother of Jane Asher, who went with Marion Faithful, See, this was the community at the time. They lived in Chelsea and they knew the Rolling Stones. It was a community, but Peter Asher threw our stuff in the rubbish bin. So then we decided we're gonna bring an apple pie to, to the Beatles. And so we made a fresh apple pie and it was aromatic. And we found George Harrison's secretary, Chris O'Dell, and she was American and she was American as apple pie. And so she said, I'll get this to George. Meanwhile, we get a call the day before that Rock Scully, Danny Rifkin, the two managers of the Grateful Dead, want to come to, San Francisco, uh, to, to London, and they want to come with Ken Kesey, who was also my friend, the author from those days, and two Hells Angels, two Hells Angel girls, or chicks, and two Hells Angels motorcycles. So they all came, and they stayed with us in the, in the warehouse. They came to see us, and they're, and they're riding on their motorcycles, 
and Betterton Street is a small street, and it reverberates. <laughs> and they come. But even Hell's Angels get jet lag, and we fed them sumptuously, everybody. We welcomed them. I had to ask the Hells Angels to take their boots off. Begrudgingly, they did. And we fed them. And then we just got a, a film from Boston. And it was the Swamiji walking. We thought it was a great film. The Swami's walking. He's looking towards the camera. The Swami's walking. They thought, this is an old man walking up and down, and they fall, small, they fall asleep on the floor. We could have divested them of their weapons. Oh, yeah, I forgot to tell. They had weapons. The women carried guns and brass knuckles and knives and things in their pocketbook. But they fell asleep. Ken Casey's there. He says, why do we need a guru? And I said, why do you need a doctor? And would you like a doctor that has never read anything? or a doctor that has no education like that. So he understood. So then the, they were invited to meet the Beatles. So they go in the room, and Sam Machinda was a friend of Rock Scully. He roomed with him in Reed College. And so he said, can I go, Rock? And, and Rock said, yes. So Sam Rishinda goes into this room, it's a crowded room, but the Hells Angels still wanted to beat up the Beatles because they didn't like any authority figure, any authority figure. So they're ready to beat up the Beatles, and John, who later became my friend, he had the Liverpoolian street sense. He was a street lad, and he looks in and he leaves. And then Paul looks in and leaves, and Ringo followed. George looked in and saw Sam Rashinda chanting in the corner, and he goes right to him and said, I've been wanting to meet you. And Sam Rashinda said, I've been wanting to meet you. And George said, John and I chanted for three days, and we couldn't stop. We were in the car, and we chanted, and we have your, your, your guru's album, and I like chanting, and I've been wanting to meet you. And it was such a peaceful meeting that the Hells Angels didn't want to beat anybody up anymore.